Welcome back to Turning Hard, Turning Hard Times to Good Times. I'm your host, Jay Taylor. Really pleased to tell you that Quentin is staying with me here for this segment. Uh, he's back to talk about El Oro Resources, which is a sponsor to this show. El Oro is also a personal favorite investment of mine. It's covered in my newsletter as well. And uh, I should tell you that Quentin, uh, through his uh, through his um, uh, affiliation with uh, Crescat Capital, is a technical advisor uh, to El Oro Resources. And El Oro's ISCA, ISCA polymetallic deposit has massive scale. It appears to have the kind of grades, uh, silver, lead, zinc, tin, copper, the kind of, collectively, the kind of values that might make it for a very, might make for a very large-scale uh, bulk mineable deposit um, that, uh, well, you might, it might have world-class potential. That's my view anyway. Um, El Oro trades in Toronto under the symbol ELO, E-L-R-R-F in the States. Uh, you can buy it that way as I have 62.1 million shares. I saw earlier today in Canadian money, $3.59, giving it a market cap of around $223 million in Canadian money. So uh, thanks for sticking around with me, uh, uh, being with us for this segment. Quentin, and um, for the sake of investors who may not be aware of El Oro's Esca Esca project, uh, perhaps you can give them an overview of the project and why you are quite optimistic, at least you were the last I spoke to you, about this story. Um, what, just give us a, a, a sort of a, an overview of, of the Certainly. story. Look, um, ISCA, ISCA is, is a polymetallic system. Means it has a lot of different metals. It's got precious metals, silver in particular, uh, but it's also got a lot of other metals, base metals included. So we got uh, zinc and lead a bit of copper, but we have tin. We have a lot of tin. Uh, there's also things, curious things like indium and uh, cadmium and bismuth and so forth. So that it, it's a kind of a unique system in the junior space. There's not too many companies exploring in this region. But in, in terms of Bolivia, it's part of a polymetallic belt. There's actually a very uh, famous belt in south central Bolivia, which includes the Potosi camp, which is the single largest silver deposit on earth. It's uh, the granddaddy of all silver discoveries. It was made in, I think, around 1550, 1544 thereabouts, <laughs> and it produced about 1.6 billion ounces of silver. So these are absolutely massive systems. When you find one of these and it's good, they are hands down world-class deposits. They deliver huge metal endowments in silver, tin, and lead, zinc, and other metals. So that's number re one reason why we're excited here. Yeah, and indium and some of those things, too, I guess they could be uh, icing on the cake, possibly, but we're that's not even for discussion now, I suppose. Well, there, the company put out uh, November 17th, another, among many other previous very long intersections, uh, mineralized intersections, this was 103 meters, grading 521 grams per ton silver equivalent. Uh, maybe you could talk about that in the, in the context of all the other drill holes that have been put into this. These are brecciated pipes uh, that are mineralized, and there's a whole series of these things along this massive caldera. Uh, and, and each of and some of these pipes are extremely large. Uh, but talk to us, what do you know so far based on, maybe you give us an idea of the geometry and the magnitude of, of these pipes and the, and the mineralization in them. Yeah, certainly. Look, uh, basically, this this volcanic center, if you think about it as an extinct volcano mm -hmm. that erupted many, many times, you know, in other words, there's different pulses of, you know, explosion breaches and stuff that come up through uh, the pile of volcanic rocks here. The entire thing's about two kilometers around, and there's many different pipes within that, like sub-pipes within that. So it's, it's like a, a bunch of mushrooms, if you will, that have mm -hmm. come up around. And what's really interesting is when the company started to explore this, they focused in the northern area where they there was a bit of uh, artisanal tin, or excuse me, uh, silver, lead, zinc mm -hmm. prospecting and mining. And they had great results. You know, back in January, 250-odd meters of, I think, 130-gram one, silver equivalent. It's an outstanding result. That got everybody very excited. Uh, but if you look at the evolution as they move southward and the evolution of how this thing's unfolded, <clears throat> as they go south from that Santa Barbara area, 
they start to see more silver and tin, and then they see now copper and gold coming into the system down at Porco, which is in the southern part of the system. Mm-hmm. And this this most recent result, the the one you quoted there, although it's in silver equivalent, again, it's polymetallic, so there's mm-hmm. uh, very good silver values, but there's also considerable tin, uh, 0.6% tin, which is, <laughs> look at, at tin prices, they're like $40,000 a, a metric ton right now. It's just insane. So this is a huge, I mean, in fact, that's dollar-wise in, in most of the endowment. But you also have copper and you have gold. Uh, the zinc and the lead have diminished when you go southward. So we're starting to see what we think is a hotter part of the system, something that's closer to the the actual, you know, mothership or magma source underlying this thing. Uh, the porphyry, the porphyritic magma that drove the system is probably sitting underneath this Porco area at depth, and and we see good evidence of that in the magnetic. So, so we're very excited. I mean, this is basically a huge, huge system. Again, world class without uh, without question, hands down, this world class system that's going to have just this whole smorgasbord of metals that uh, you know range from silver, zinc, lead to silver tin to you know, silver, tin, copper, gold, you know, it's just about anything you can dream of. So the tin, though, is, is more to the south? Yeah, the tin grades are increasing to the south, and also the copper and the gold grades are increasing uh, dramatically as we go south. That that usually is a sign you're getting closer to the, the actual magmatic source for the mm-hmm. metal. Mm-hmm. Well, I, I believe that most of the work so far has been done up and more to the north in the Santa Barbara pipe uh and uh, i think that's where there's going to be a maiden resource coming out from there i believe right uh santa barbara uh yeah it's the santa barbara pipe and i think they found it actually extends maybe more to the north than initially envisioned but is that is the uh, the maiden resource it's supposed to come out pretty soon i'm not sure exactly when uh it will that be confined to this uh, Santa Barbara pipe primarily, or what? That's correct, around the Santa Barbara pipe. So uh, Bill, actually, Bill Pearson uh, gave a, a summary of the plans in the Tomazos conference uh, recording. If people access it, they can hear a little bit more detail. But in short, they are focused around that north area, around Santa Barbara, because that's where they've done most of their drilling to date. Uh, they have chased the system northward. Bill seems to be very excited about what he's seeing because every time uh, I think, okay, that's it, they're going to you know, stop here, they put in another fence of holes. Uh, so there's clearly a, a very robust system developing as around the Santa Barbara area. Right now, it's about 1,400 meters from north to south. It's about 500 meters east to west, and they're testing holes uh, up to about 600 meters vertically below surface. So you do a little math on that, and you get some crazy number like a billion tons of basically rock that they're targeting and it's not to say the entire thing's going to be mineralized but you know if if you say maybe 30 or 40 percent of that's mineralized you know this is a very big target and you look at the weighted average grades of of the intercepts so far they're probably running around you know three or four ounce silver equivalent so Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. we're talking about a big big deposit a big silver deposit, silver, primarily from the Santa Barbara, so we'd be looking more at silver zinc up there, I guess, primarily. Yes, yeah, silver zinc and, and lead, a little bit of tin, but that's pr- your primary metals. And that, that makes it very much like the San Cristobal deposit, which is a bit to the west of here. Uh, you know, lead zinc at San Cristobal pay for mining, basically pay for mining and operation, you know, processing and stuff. And... Um, I would expect the same here. Uh, I would think that the base metals pay for the mining and the silver comes along and is basically your profit. So, you know, what a, what an amazing story. So we could be looking at a, at a pretty significant silver deposit in the making right now. And do you, do you know when they're planning to come out with their initial maiden resource? Um, the assays are coming along slowly. That's the yeah. main you know, drag on things. Uh, I think Bill intended to get something put out by the end of this year, but the assay turnaround has just been – uh, too slow. So I would say it's going to be sometime in the first half of next year, likely you know April, May, somewhere in there, is my best guess. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's not a baby stock as as these uh, companies that that I'm used to looking at. Uh, 220 million dollar market cap, Canadian money, even though it's Canadian money. Um, but it sounds like when you just talk about the Santa Barbara pipe itself, 
we could be looking at a very significant silver equivalent deposit. And then you're looking at tin, and I, I have no idea about the economics of tin. I'd like to have you talk to us about that sometime. Uh, I don't know if you talk about it on your Crestcat uh, gets active videos or not. And I might just say to my listeners that they might want to, those of you who are following the stocks that are discussed in this on this show, many of which are covered by and owned by Crestcat, Quentin does a remarkable job of explaining the geology uh, in layman's terms for people and for investors. Uh, so those of you, I just encourage people to go and watch uh, Crestcat gets ap- active. Um, but so we're looking at, uh, I think something that has significant upside is what I'm what I'm believing and why I'm still an enthusiastic buyer of the stock at its current market cap. We uh, look the tin is very exciting. Think of it as a gravy on top. I mean, it's got the silver and zinc and lead, but the tin. Nobody's looked for primary tin deposits. We as geologists have done a terrible job of finding the future tin resources that the world needs. That's why tin is forty thousand dollars a ton for Pete's sake. So, you know, this is an exceptional discovery at a critical juncture where the world basically is absolutely starved for tin. What are what is tin used for these days, primarily? Uh, primarily for for electronic soldering and stuff, and then. Oh, okay. In, in pipes and stuff like, you know, your water pipes, they use tin log solders and stuff. That's still the main use, and there's not a good substitute for tin. So uh, tin is uh, critical. Just with about a minute, a minute and a half or so left here yet, uh, a lot of these polymetallic deposits are sort of complicated metallurgically. Have Has there been some metallurgical work done? They're doing metallurgical work right now. Uh, it's going to be mainly geared around the stuff around Santa Barbara because that's where the initial PEA, or excuse me, uh, resource work is going to come, come from in the ultimate PEA. Uh, the look, the metallurgy, from what I can see, uh, based on the mineralogy and the core and so forth, it looks very similar to all the rest of the deposits in this region, like San Cristobal and Potosi and and you know some of these other uh, large polymetallic systems in Bolivia, each and every one of them produces very high quality concentrates that are easily saleable, basically any smelter in the on the planet. So I I don't see any foreseeable problems, but yes, that work is being done. The tin is an added component. It will likely be recovered through gravity separation because uh, tin occurs as cassiterite, which is a heavy mineral. So I expect mm. recoveries of tin as well. All right. How well funded is the company? And uh, maybe just round out by telling us what we should then sort of in summary what we should be watching out for. Sure thing. Look, the the company, I don't know exactly how much cash they have right this second. I believe it's between 10 and 15 million Canadian dollars remaining. But they did some financing early this year, got well cashed up. But they've been burning through around a little over a million a month. Uh, I think they had, say, 35 million when they started their their big push with the drilling uh, back in March. So I, w- I would say that I'd be shocked if they're significantly below $15 million. Uh, the company's well positioned to, to get this resource done. I think you'll see a re-rate, a significant re-rate, because everybody will wake up and go, wow, this thing is incredible. Mm-hmm. And then, um, you know, if, obviously the company needs to drill the Porco area now. That's yeah. going to be priority, too, to get that, uh, you know, lined up. So, yeah, they'll probably raise money, but probably after the resource and maybe even after a PEA, I don't know. You know, start moving south then and looking at some of those. Uh, sure thing. As soon as they're done with the drilling at, uh, at Santa Barbara, which should be done here soon, mm-hmm. uh, they'll hit Porco very hard. They've they've done a lot of geophysics and prep work you know, to help develop targets down there. I would expect them to be drilling at Porco by early next year, and that will become the new focus for the next you know 12 months or so. Excellent. Well, a very exciting story. Thank you, Quentin, for for being with us to explain this to us uh, once again. Sure thing.